Chadi. The Chadi were an ancient Germanic tribe whose homeland was near the Upper Weser. They lived in central and northern Hesse and southern lower Saxony, along the upper reaches of that river and in the valleys and mountains of the Eder and Fulda regions, a district approximately corresponding to Hesse Kassel, though probably somewhat more extensive. They settled within the region in the 1st century BC according to Tacitus, the Batavians and Canaan fates of his time, tribes living within the empire, were descended from part of the Chadi, who left their homeland after an internal quarrel drove them out, to take up new lands at the mouth of the Rhine. The extremely large time scale of prehistoric Europe left stone tools and weapons dating from the Paleolithic to the Iron Age that were chronologically ordered and dated in the 19th and 20th centuries. Tribes such as the Chadi, Simpri, and Langoberti have not been well distinguished until relatively recently. While Julius Caesar was well informed about the regions and tribes on the eastern banks of the Rhine, he never mentioned the Chadi by name. He did make note of the Suebi though, and suggested that they had previously driven out the Celts to the south of the region corresponding to modern North Hesse in the prior centuries. Pliny the Elder, in his natural history group the Chadi and Suebi together with the Hermanduri and the Cheruski, calling this group the Hermiones, which is a nation of Germanic tribes mentioned by Tacitus as living in inland Germany. Some commentators believe that Caesar's Suebi were possibly the later Chadi, a branch of the Swabian movement of people who had become more clearly identifiable. If not, then the Chadi may represent a successful resistance to the Suebi, as opposed to the Tanktiri, Usipetes, and Dubii who all were forced from homelands in the same region by the Swabic incursions. The first ancient writer to mention the Chadi is Strabo, sometime after 16, who includes the Chadi in a listing of conquered Germanic tribes who were more settled and agricultural, but also poorer, than the nomadic tribes in central and eastern Germania such as the Suebi. They were poor because they had fought the Romans, and had been defeated and plundered. In his second book of epigrams, Marshall credited the emperor Domitian as having overcome the Chadi. For the first century, Tacitus provides important information about the Chadis' part in the Germanic wars and certain elements of their culture. He says that, the Chadis' settlements begin at the Hercunian Forest, where the country is not so open and marshy as in the other cantons into which Germany stretches. They are found where there are hills, and with them grow less frequent, for the Hercunian Forest keeps close till it has seen the last of its native Chadi. Hardy frames, close knit limbs, fierce countenances, and a peculiarly vigorous courage, mark the tribe. For Germans, they have much intelligence and sagacity, they promote their picked men to power, and obey those whom they promote, they keep their ranks, note their opportunities, check their impulses, portion out the day, entrench themselves by night, regard fortune as a doubtful, valor as an unfailing, resource, and what is most unusual, and only given to systematic discipline, they rely more on the general than on the army. Their whole strength is in their infantry, which, in addition to its arms, is laden with iron tools and provisions. Other tribes you see going to battle, the Chadi to a campaign. Seldom do they engage in mere raids and casual encounters. It is indeed the peculiarity of a cavalry force quickly to win and as quickly to yield a victory. Fleetness and timidity go together, deliberateness is more akin to steady courage. Tacitus also notes that, like other Germanic tribes, the Chadi took an interest in traditions concerning haircuts and beards. A practice, rare among the other German tribes, and simply characteristic of individual prowess, has become general among the Chadi, of letting the hair and beard grow as soon as they have attained manhood, and not till they have slain a foe laying aside that peculiar aspect which debits and pledges them to valor. Over the spoiled and bleeding enemy they show their faces once more, then, and not till then, proclaiming that they have discharged the obligations of their birth, and proved themselves worthy of their country and of their parents. The coward and the unwarlike remain unshorn. The bravest of them also wear an iron ring until they have released themselves by the slaughter of a foe. Most of the Chadi delight in these fashions. Even hoary headed men are distinguished by them, and are thus conspicuous alike to enemies and to fellow countrymen. To begin the battle always rests with them, they form the first line, an unusual spectacle. Nor even in peace do they assume a more civilized aspect. They have no home or land or occupation, they are supported by whomsoever they visit as lavish of the property of others as they are regardless of their own, till at length the feebleness of age makes them unequal to so stern a valor. Between the Rhine and the Chadi, Tacitus places the tank tiers and Usipetes, who apparently had been moved since the time of Caesar into the old homeland off the Ubi, who had in turn settled in Golone. To the south, 
Tacitus also says that the Chaudis land is beyond the questionable lands, the so-called tithe lands, or agri decumates, that adventurers from the Roman sides of the Rhine and Danube had been trying to settle. It is possible that at first the Chaudi moved into place on the Rhine, in the old territory of the Ubi. Cassius Dio describes Drusus establishing a fort in Chaudi territory on the Rhine in 11, and that in 10 they moved out of an area where the Romans had permitted them. To the north of the Chaudi, Tacitus places the large area of the Chaudi. To the east, the neighbors of the Chaudi and Chaudi were the Cheruski, who Tacitus describes as excessively peace loving in his time. The Chaudi successfully resisted incorporation into the Roman Empire, joining the Cheruscan war leader Arminius coalition of tribes that annihilated Verus legions in 9 AD in the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest. Germanicus later, in 15, raided their lands in revenge, but Rome eventually responded to the Chaudi's belligerent defense of their independence by building the Limes border fortifications along the southern boundary of their lands in central Hesse during the early years of the 1st century. A major raid by the Chaudi into Germania Superior was defeated decisively by the legions in 50 AD. In 58 AD the Chaudi were defeated by the Hermanduri in a border dispute over a religiously significant river. Roman sources identify the fabled Matium, beyond the Eder, as the capital of the Chaudi. Destroyed by Germanicus, its location is not known today, but generally is assumed to be in the wider neighborhood of Fritzler north of the river Eder. After the early 3rd century, however, the Chaudi virtually disappear from the sources and are only called upon as a topical element or when writing about events of the 1st century. Cassius Dio is most likely not only the first author to mention the Alamanide but also the last one to record a historical appearance of the Chaudi. Writing about the Germanic War of Caracalla in 213, he has the emperor fight Kappa Nu Nu Omicron Upsilon Sigma, K Epsilon Lambda Tau Iota Kappa O Grave Nu Theta Nu Omicron Sigma. This is taken from an excerpt of Dio in the writings of Ioannes Philinus, however, whereas the fragment of Alisiana refer to the same people as Chadoi. The usage of K Epsilon Lambda Tau Iota Kappa Sigma for Germanic peoples was an archaic tradition among Greek writers. After Cassius Dio, the name Chattis appears among others in a panegyric by Sidonius Apollinaris in the late 5th century, now as a poetic synonym for Germanus. The last ancient source to mention the Chatti, if only in a quotation of Sulpicius Alexander describing events of the late 4th century, was Gregory of Tours. The Chatti eventually may therefore have become a branch of the much larger neighboring Franks and their region was incorporated in the kingdom of Clovisy, probably with the Riparians, at the beginning of the 6th century. The Chaudi name is apparently preserved in the medieval and modern name of Hesse in Germany, which is a name that already appears early. In 723, for example, the Anglo Saxon missionary Winfred, subsequently called St. Boniface, Apostle of the Germans, proselytizing among the Hessians, felled their sacred tree, Thor's Oak, near Fritzler, as part of his efforts to convert them and other Germanic tribes to Christianity. Two tribes in northern Germany have names that are sometimes compared to the Chaudi. The Chatterai, whose name appears to mean that they are dwellers upon the Chadi lands, or else Chadi people, lived near the Rhine, probably between Nysel and Lippa. They came to be seen as Franks and apparently moved over the Rhine as a Frankish people, to settle into the corner of land between the Rhine and Moss rivers. The name of the Chatterai is in turn, sometimes compared to another people called the Chasserai mentioned by several classical authors. The Chasserai were a Germanic tribe mentioned by Tacitus in the Germania. According to him, they dwelt to the north of the Chamavi and Angry Varai, who dwelt in turn to the north of the Brookteri, between EMS and Vaser. However, the name of the Chasserai most often is interpreted to mean dwellers one Thais, river, a tributary to the EMS. The second century geographer Claudius Ptolemy mentions that the Xuri oil lived to the east of the Abnoble Mountains, in the vicinity of Hesse, but this account of northern Europe is thought to contain confusions derived from using different sources. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.